Okay, now in ePlan, let's see a different method, right? Typically, we uh, work it out in a certain way by creating the schematics and then going to the panel layout. This time, I want to start from an Excel sheet, get right away to the digital twin. So let me just show you a little bit or explain to you how we typically do it, right? Typically, we have something more along these lines. You have sales on one side. Sales gives me some information. I have everything on the electrical side pumped into ePlan. I get some parts from the data portal. I create my PLC drawings. I exchange with my PLC programmers and IO list. I exchange an electrical bill of material parallel to the mechanical bill of material with the ERP system. They buy everything, it goes to the stock. And then at one point in time, manufacturing is waiting for us. So with this integrated value chain, we have a way to process everything from the schematics, the panel layout, terminal strip assembly list, a duck and rail cut list, an NC drilling list with all the holes and the cutouts, the labels. We even have a wire list, a target list, like a from to list. And we even have an IO test list if we want to. And all this is due to ProPanel, together with Rital and Phoenix Contact, we just can do this. Now, my intention here is to show you how to go from a bill of material in Excel right away to the digital twin. How do we do this? We proceed right away into the pro panel, our parts here, and we can pump out all the data right away to manufacturing. Of course, we won't have the schematics, and the wire cut list is a little bit short in information, but that's about it. Everything else should be there. So let's take a look at ePlan. So I'm switching over here to ePlan, you know the interface. And as usual, when we start a project, we type in the project uh, name, we um, select the right template, make sure it's a ZW9 because everything is there. And we just happens to be that I already have this project from before, I'll override it to start from scratch. Now, this being done, I have, of course, a project that has all kinds of information already preset, yet no schematics or no panel layouts, unless I already have some standard panels that I usually use. This is a little bit the case here. You can see here my layout has already two panels in here, it could be like standard panels. That That is one option. I'll leave them as such, okay, I'm not gonna touch them. I'm gonna add a new layout. It's gonna be my second layout for uh, one of these panels that I'm going to associate to my mounting location plus P, and that's going to be my uh, Craig's panel. Okay, Craig's panel. So Craig on his side, he gave me an Excel sheet. So what do I do with this Excel sheet? I'm going to go right away into my parts management, and I will import, because here we have all kinds of parts, I will import his parts. I'm going to import it as a CSV file. And the CSV file is configured the way that this CFG file is telling me. It's configured to have in its second column the order number, in the third column the part number, and a description in column number five. So indeed, I took the Excel sheet that Craig sent me, and this is an Excel sheet. Let me just show you what I did to it. It originally contained two columns, these two columns here. I added this third column, which was just a concatenation of this RIT and the order number, and I added here the Craig 2019-0722 project name. This can now be imported right away as a CSV format. So here, this is just save. Don't save, we'll save it anyways. I'm gonna pick that project right away here and I'm gonna import the parts. There we go. Now, how do I find these parts? They're actually easy to find because they have no description and they have this Craig as description number three. But even better in the ePlan, I have this full text search that actually shows me all these parts. As you can see, no description. The perfect order number is there. So everyone got the order number and the part number. Now I'm going to use this data portal professional tool to update via the data portal. What this does, it jumps over to the data portal and inside the data portal, it finds 23 parts that could be
be enhanced. So I'm going to click here on the enhance button and down at the bottom you can see it's downloading in the background and you can actually visualize these parts. You can recognize what these parts are. So we recognize some sub plates, some side plates, some doors, some hinges, some accessories like partial um, uh, mount, mounting plates. Uh, we can see here some, what is this? this? These are extra hinges to look nice. We have partial doors that are placed. Uh, all kinds of different things you can see here. Here's some, some uh, front uh, trim panel. One uh, here, the two of them actually, uh, 600 by 100, 600 by 100 with some extra protection. And you'll see when it's actually finished at the end of uh, this, all these parts, although I never saw them, I don't know anything about them, they are fr um, actually then smart uh, because we will be able to import them all in one single step. So of course it's remaining two minutes here to import. So maybe I'll be just jumping ahead instead of waiting those two minutes. Give me a little bit of time. So I'll be cutting this. I'll see you in a few seconds when the import button is there again. Import is now there. I can now import. Relatively fast, it imports all the data. Here we go, it's done. So this means now I can start inserting the enclosure. But the enclosure I'm looking after is of course the enclosure that we just got here, this one. And I'm gonna insert it and check it out. Okay. Is that the enclosure? Uh, no, I may have missed it, sorry. That wasn't the enclosure. I'm just gonna go and do a more sore detailed search with the Craig here. Um, I'll go with Craig 2019 as we said. It's going to be reduced to only this one here. This is exactly the one I wanted. And you can see this panel here is a bit different because it's 600 wide by 800 deep, right? Now, typically when you have an enclosure like this, you can add some accessories. But I certainly see here, there is no accessory. Let me just explain to you what this is, an accessory. In Retail, I'm going to go for a very similar panel, the 8608. So let me show you. You go back to the data portal. Why is it similar, the 8608500? -500? Because it's exactly as wide. It's not as tall, you'll see. But this one has already all the accessories I'm thinking about. So I'm going to show you how out of a non-smart, let's say, panel that you may have or you may have converted yourself, you can turn it into a very smart panel with all these accessories. You need very often even take over some of these accessories from this other panel. So I'll show you. Give me two seconds and I'll show you first of all what this all means by first placing the, uh, the smaller panel that is there. And I'll show you the use that we can make when we have these accessories. So let's say you want to add some accessories to this. You get a list like this. So let's say you want to add this here. This is a baseline uh, for cables. Uh, let's say you want to put some intermediate panel for a second one, you know, like this. Or you want to add some walls maybe a wall on the left-hand side or something like that. You can just pick the, these items, and when you do OK, boom, 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 it places all these accessories. How does that work? Let's go take a look at the parts itself. So we were working on the 8608. Let's do a filter very quickly. Here is the part number we were looking for. That's the panel. And this particular panel here, 
when we look at the accessory list, you can see a whole bunch of accessories. If I take this accessory here, which is the base, right, I could add that same 600-800 base to my other panel. So let's take, take a look. If I go here, switch over to Craig, find very quickly here the panel. There it is. And I could do exactly this add an accessory. And why don't we add this base down here? just as an example. So by adding this base, let's search for it. We'll find it very quickly. We can just add it here. And now we can define where it's placed. Now, most of these placement options or these accessory placement can be shared because if you have, uh, let's say this one here, the TP base, that is based on a housing exterior down left to rear, I happen to have that exterior down rear, so I can use this one. So if you want to, you can repeat the operation and also go and pick the 200 base if you wish to. So just a little bit further down is a 200 base for 600 by 800. It's double the size and it would work too. These accessories, you can add as many accessories as you want and very typically and very often you can compare to a cousin that looks very similar, like the one that we had earlier there, and this would help you actually create these accessories. Now, let me show you how this works. Now that we have this enclosure, which is this enclosure number four, this one here, right? We can just go insert accessories, and you will have these two bases. Let's say I pick the, pay the 200 base, and I place that one. Well, then it just basically places that 200 base down there. These mounting aids that you see, are just basically mounting aids. You don't have to basically keep them, okay? And here you go. And you can continue like this on and on. Uh, if you decide to add onto this one, let's say, um, a device such as a fan. A fan would be found here under the um, motors. I have some here. If we go to my uh, motors, I can see here under general, I will certainly find the Rital uh, manufacturer, and I can find different fans. If I take a small one, or I want a bigger one, it's up to me, I can choose, right? I'll pick the part number, and here you can see if I get closer, I can just place it. Now, of course, it might be ideal to work off the front. You can use the placement option to specify, I want this with a certain offset, let's say a 300 millimeters from the bottom. So here you can see you have an, a certain offset, right? So you can go here and have this placed as an offset. You can do the same thing at the top, of course, or you just place it, you know, open-handed like this. I'm going to do this a couple of times here because what I want to see is I want to see these surfaces because they require some drill holes. If I go here, you will see I require a square and a couple of these round holes. I'm not going to mount more than that. That's basically all I want. And what I'll do is on this side here, I'm just going to generate my project reports. And by generating the project reports, it automatically creates a certain list of items. But I can also generate automatically my drilling views if I want to. And if I generate drilling views, you can see I have an extra drilling set here that, that appeared. I'll show you in a few seconds. And I have another one called model views. And that also generates a couple of these extra pages. Now let's take a look. This, these are all reports. These are all views that can be useful for the manufacturing side when you start building that panel or assembling that panel. And we'll take a look at them. So the first thing is, of course, the drilling. The drilling is down here. So for my panels here, I have basically, you can see, one, two, and three surfaces that have to be drilled. And a rectangle has to be cut out. Interesting. These all come out. And of course, if you have the Rital Perforex, it's even easier because you can just send it out here to the machining Perforex and the information will be transferred right away to the Perforex machine. Coming down to the rails, 
Well, we do have this other panel that had a couple of rails and docks. So here I can see here the rails and the docks, and I can actually see here the exact length for every one of these docks. So the, the, the dock number 14 that I can see here has exactly 740 millimeters or 29 inches in length, etc. So this helps the, the guys on the shop floor pre-cut all your docks and your rails. I also have a kitting list. So the kitting list is what? It's basically a list of all the components for a specific environment. So remember that plus P panel one that we had? Well, these are all the components that we have, all the fans that have to be added. So out of the kitting list, I will need a total of one, two, three, four, five, six fans. It happens to be that I placed six different fans. Remember, these are all reports, okay? They all come automatically with uh, my items. And of course, I will have to label them. Right now, I only have six fans, but because I have six fans, even though I didn't do any schematics, these six fans show up here as automatic labeling, or I could also transfer this immediately to a labeling system. So that was quickly to show you how from a bill of material in Excel, you could jump to the ePlan documentation and create your panel as complex as you wish to.